Hello and welcome to this annual community report from the Society of St. John the Evangelist in Cambridge, Massachusetts. During this report, you will hear from each of the brothers in the community about our life and ministry, not only of the challenges we have faced, but our hopes and plans for the future as well. You will hear how we continue to navigate through COVID and the opportunities presented to us as we re-engage in ministry at home in the Boston and West Newbury areas, as well as further afield. It has been good to reopen the guest house and see many of you for the first time in over three years, just as it has been good to travel and meet you once again in the places where you live and worship the Lord. You will hear about plans for the guest house programs, as well as opportunities to join us online for worship, as well as what we are planning for online ministry in the coming year. Among the many exciting developments, you will hear about our growing prison ministry, our increasing connections with South America, and our renewed ministry at Emory House. I hope that in this short presentation, you will get a sense of what God in the person of Jesus is doing in our midst, and how your prayers and friendship are helping us fulfill our mission to bring men, women, and children into closer union with God by the power of the Spirit that God breathes into us. For several years, we brothers have been listening to the guidance of the Holy Spirit in regard to our ministry at Emory House, our rural ministry in West Newbury, Massachusetts. We have also been listening to one another, and we have been listening to the land itself in discerning a path forward. Over the past year, with the assistance of wise and generous advisors, a vision statement has emerged that crystallizes the, ex the essence of that calling. Emory House is not just a historic farmhouse and retreat center surrounded by some woods, fields, and rivers. It is for us a place for all people to experience the boundless love of God made manifest in creation. Its role in our ministry is essential. We live in a time when so many are alienated from this living earth and despairing at its ecological crucifixion. In response, we are called to bear witness to a life-giving alternative, connecting people to land as we ground ourselves in contemplative disciplines, the labor of our hands, and a deeper attunement to the wild around us. Our ministry at Emory House is once again thriving, and it looks a little different than it has in the past. The shift in the character of this place might best be described as participation rather than mere stewardship. This place is not a resource however carefully we conserve it. It is a vast network of sacred relationships. As we read God's signs and presence within and alongside the web of all life in this particular place, we are called to reciprocity, to tend the soil, to love every bird and leaf, and to truly inhabit this corner of creation as fellow workers with our Creator. We would be honored if you would join us in this unfolding vision. We look forward to welcoming you to Emory House. We are grateful to resume ministry in person beyond the monastery and Emory House. We have strong rhythms at home and it's energizing for us to travel. We like to see some of you in your own parish, school or region and to make new friends. We have preached, spoken in classes, and led quiet days nearby, 
And this year we went to New Hampshire, New York, Texas, Virginia, Alabama, Kentucky, and even Ecuador. Going out on mission is also part of our formation. We further learn to teach. We often travel in pairs. We receive and build relationships. This year, a couple brothers finally had their first time flying out on mission instead of zooming in. It's humbling and gratifying to visit people at home or gathered in their region, to hear the impact we and those before us have made and to be together. Thank you for your support as we go out in person to share good news. This past year in particular has deepened my sense of the gift which you in the fellowship are to us brothers, to the church, and in God's world. For in that world, each of you abides in Christ in your uniquely created way. You are incarnations of God's peace and creativity, forgiveness and reconciliation, compassion and self-offering love. You are each particular sacramental signs of who God is to us, to one another, and to all which God has brought into being. Your confidence and hope in Christ shine as light and life in and through your daily prayer and service, in ways great and small, spoken or silent, widely known or hidden with Christ in God. Your adherence in faith to Jesus as Savior and Lord empowers your daily dying to and your continuing renunciation of the unjust injustice, destruction, exploitation, and hatred of pervasive evil, which Christ has defeated in his death and resurrection. The year past has blessed the fellowship with nearly 30 new members, and there are just over 50 probationers in discernment at this time. We SSJE brothers are humbled and honored by your generous support and care for our life and ministry through your gifts, material and spiritual. As you continue to live into baptismal union with Jesus, following a rule of life in harmony with ours, may our life together become more and more a new song of thanksgiving and praise to God. Alleluia. Hi, I'm David. I've been living at Emory House for the last three months, but have recently returned to the monastery in Cambridge to take up the role of guest house brother. We love welcoming you to our two locations and hope you will take the opportunity to make a retreat with us in the coming year. We'll do our best to provide you with a quiet and comfortable atmosphere to sustain you with good food and to include you in our regular round of daily worship. In addition to providing space for individuals to be on retreat, we will also be offering a number of programs this year. We'll be offering programmed retreats in Advent and Lent, inviting newcomers to join us for our first time in silent retreat weekends, and offering retreats based on themes or aimed at certain populations. In addition to program retreats, we'll also be reintroducing Saturday morning workshops. We haven't been able to offer these workshops for several years now because of COVID, and we're glad once again to be able to open our doors to those who would enjoy a morning of instruction and dialogue on topics related to the spiritual life. And finally, we hope to offer several new programs digitally. COVID opened up for us the possibility of offering our retreats and workshops to a much broader audience. And we hope to continue what we've begun by offering several new digital programs this year, which can be enjoyed by everyone, including those who are unable to travel to Cambridge or West Newbury to be with us in person. We extend our warmest greetings to you all and hope you'll take advantage of these offerings and join us in retreat this coming year. 
We'd be glad too if you would tell others about our offerings and encourage them to join us. Thank you as always for the many ways you support SSJE and its ministries. Some of us brothers have the privilege of corresponding with prisoners and visiting prison. Uh, I'll call this visiting with Jesus in prison. And I mean that in two ways. In the gospel, according to Matthew, you know, Jesus shares this arresting allegory about meeting him, oftentimes quite disguised. He says, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or imprisoned and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of those who are the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. I think we can hear Jesus uh, in two complementary ways, both prescriptively and descriptively. Prescriptively, insofar as we bring an, I'll call it intervention of love, to those who are otherwise among the least and the last and the lost, to whom Jesus is passionately and preferentially inclined. And then we can hear this descriptively, insofar as we experience a face and form of Jesus among the poor and imprisoned, whom we will miss if we seek and meet Jesus only among those whose lives are similar to our own, whose lives may be privileged. Uh, Jesus is so much more. It's about visiting with Jesus in prison, bearing Jesus uh, and receiving Jesus. During this past year, the community has deepened its relationship with the Spanish-speaking Episcopal religious community called the Missionary Order of the Epiphany. We had the pleasure of welcoming their superior, Padre Narciso Diaz, who spent several days staying at the monastery in January. Also staying was our good friend, the Reverend Deacon Emma Rosero Nordan, who has been missioner for Hispanic ministries in the Diocese of Massachusetts and whose wisdom and experience have been an invaluable resource. During their stay, we had the pleasure of meeting with Bishop Alan Gates. The Order now has 14 professed members, men and women, and also, by the grace of God, 12 new novices. They are mostly from Colombia and Ecuador, but also from the United States and Puerto Rico. Many of the members of the order work in very challenging circumstances with some of society's most vulnerable and often amidst great poverty. So membership of the order is for them a, a great strength and support in their various ministries. At the end of March, I had the privilege of being invited by the Order to lead their annual retreat in Quito, Ecuador. It was a wonderful experience and I received so many blessings from my time with them. So do please pray for the Orden Misionera Episcopal de la Epifania for new members and for God's blessing on their life and witness. Many of you will know that three years ago, we brothers embarked on a one-year period of discernment about our community life and ministries that we dubbed Renewing Our Foundations. As a part of those discussions, we looked back at our history and marveled at the missionary zeal of our society. Almost three years after our founding in 1866, we established a house here in Boston. 
Throughout our history, we've also ministered in India, South Africa, Canada, and Japan, just to name a few. Personally, I am always inspired by the verse in 1 Peter chapter 3, which says, Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an account of the hope that is in you. Those of us who are current members of the Society of St. John the Evangelist kept asking the question, what is our mission field in these modern times? The Holy Spirit revealed to us through the period of the pandemic shutdown that the internet, while not technically a mission field, was a vehicle to share the account of hope within us on the international stage once again. Our spirits were encouraged to see comments pop up on our live stream webcasts of Evensong and see people say, hello and peace to you, not only from different places across the United States, but also from New Zealand, Portugal, South Africa, Argentina, and many more. We realize that our ministry of live streaming has enabled us to share worship not only with people who were known to us, but to others who discovered us on social media through the sharing of our live stream worship by you. You joined us in the ministry of evangelism by sharing our worship online. It is our plan to continue our live streaming of worship regularly each week as a way of sharing the hope of all of us who follow Jesus Christ. We also experimented with online digital retreat and workshops, as well as gatherings of the Fellowship of St. John. We think you will be happy to know that we are currently putting together some new digital retreats, as well as opportunities for fellowship for this next program year. We brothers continue to pray for you all and want you to know how much we appreciate your presence with us both in person and online. We hope that you will continue to help us facilitate relationship with Jesus to those who are seeking the very hope we enjoy by joining us online and sharing with others our prayer, worship, and preaching. Thank you, and may God bless you all. We continue to work with men in discernment of potential locations with us. Currently, there are about 10 men in the inquiry process with us, and we're hopeful that at least one of them may join us as a postulant sometime later this year. Many of our ongoing projects, whether it's the reestablishing of Brothers at Emory House, working with students and seminarians, or doing more online outreach, are in part geared toward attracting new vocations. We have several inquiries visits scheduled for the spring and summer, so those of you who are local or watch our liturgies online may see or meet some of the men discerning with us soon. One element of our vocations planning and outreach is our vocations website, catchthelife.org, which we continue to update, refresh, and advertise. Finally, we continue to pray regularly for new vocations to our community and for the ongoing discernment of the religious life. And we deeply appreciate the willingness of you all to promote SSJE and to pray with us for these new vocations. From April 2nd to April 8th, we brothers celebrated the rites of Holy Week and Easter. Our celebrations of these ancient rites brought with them the great honor and delight of welcoming our regular worshipers from the local community to join us. And thanks to our growing fluency with the intricacies of live streaming, our celebrations reached across time and distance as we welcomed folks from all over the world to worship with us digitally via our live stream. While three of our number wound up contracting the COVID virus, we carried on. Our superior, James, had the prudent foresight to give us all a bit of space to keep our immune systems in good order. So we subsequently limited our worship to the major rites of Holy Week for going morning prayer until Good Friday. 
While we spent the initial days of Holy Week masked, the liturgies were highly attended. We welcomed all who attended to participate fully in the solemn liturgies leading up to Easter in a way we had not been able to since 2019. We joined Jesus in the humbling act of washing each other's feet on Monday Thursday before keeping an all-night watch before the sacrament until 7.30 Friday morning. That evening, members of the gathered body lent their voices to the praying of the solemn collects for the Good Friday liturgy before we moved to the striking procession of deep bows at the veneration of the cross. And most poignantly, we gathered at 4.30 in the morning on Sunday to light the new fire and the paschal candle and hear as Brother Todd sang the church's ancient song of defiance in the face of death, the exalted. These opening actions set the tone as we listened to the story of our salvation and sang together psalm paraphrases and canticles while the rising sun slowly began to light the chapel. For me, the climax of the great vigil of Easter was the moving baptism of Eva Heaps. The church is still scented with the rich aroma of the chrism oil used to seal her new life in Christ. All of this made it possible for us to offer our guests the full sensual experience of the Holy Week rites, unencumbered by the limitations of previous years. After four years of living here in the monastery in Cambridge, I have finally moved to Embry House. As you can imagine, life is quite different in the countryside compared to the city. Instead of car horns outside my window, I hear birds. <laughs> Instead of living with 13 other brothers, I live with two other brothers, and chickens, and bees, and deer, and all sorts of other creatures. We brothers are working very hard getting our quarter acre garden up and running. For the first time in my life, I'm learning how to grow food and how to cook food. Luckily, I'm already really good at eating food. But along with our work outdoors, we are maintaining a monastic schedule of worship. If you have ever been to our chapel at Emory House, you know it is a beautiful space surrounded by nature. We brothers really look forward to seeing you soon at Emory House and hope you can come join us in our adventures. God bless. In the chapter on hospitality, our rule of life says, if we are attentive, every guest will be a gift and a word of God to us. As the first year more or less fully open to guests, we have been so grateful to receive the gift of your presence again. We hosted over 150 guests in the guest house this year, many longtime friends uh, like you, as well as new friends who experienced retreat for the first time. Program retreats were also back with an introduction to silent retreat, uh, themes on Advent, Lent, embodied prayer, prayer with singing, praying with neurodiversity, and praying as preachers. In addition to our guests, we were also joined by four student monastic residents, all of them graduate students at Harvard who lived and worked alongside us this academic year. And we've even learned to weather the occasional storm when COVID sneaks into the guest house. We are so deeply aware of how much we value sharing our lives with you as guests in our home. Right now we're in the midst of planning our next year of programs to offer in the guest house. So we look forward to seeing you again in person. One aspect of my life here as a novice at SSG is volunteering with MANA at the Cathedral Church of St. Paul in Boston, which I want to talk about because it has had such a profound impact on me. MANA is a ministry of and with the unhoused community in downtown Boston. The list of all the things that MANA does is too long to list, but operationally MANA is a daytime drop-in program offering meals, coffee, clothing, resources for housing and healthcare, job training, and very importantly, community. The community component is an essential part of the model, and one major goal of the program is to connect both housed and unhoused people in a broader support network. 
The chaplains, volunteers, and everyone who makes Manor run do an incredible job of making every guest feel welcomed and seen, just as Jesus taught us to do. The reason that I love Manna is because people make you feel incredibly welcome and there is clearly a deep concern and compassion for everyone who comes through the door. Plus, knowing that you are in the middle of something essential to the life of the church makes it all the better. I also love eating, drinking tons of coffee, listening to music and singing along, and socializing with new people, so in general it's a great fit for me. I more recently started volunteering with Friday Cafe here in Cambridge at First Church, which has a similar mission and model to Mana, and I highly encourage you to check out both if you're in the area. These are both local church ministries that SSG Brothers as a whole love, and if you are in the Boston or Cambridge area, I highly encourage you to volunteer and support the incredible work that these faith-based programs are doing. Not only are they doing God's work, but it's a joy to be a part of that, but it's also a great experience filled with amazing people. The story of this year at the monastery has been one of emergence. After being restricted to live streaming offices in the Eucharist, we reopened the chapel last spring. After years of closure, we reopened the guest house to retreatants. During the pandemic, we explored and experimented and expanded. But we have all been so excited to reemerge and to welcome you back. Not that it's always been smooth, though. COVID has hit the monastery in limited ways several times. We've had to stay nimble and responsive. It sometimes felt like taking two steps forward and one step back. But living with the COVID in the monastery has been an invitation to thankfulness, mutual support and love, and patience. Through it all, we are so thankful for the expert advice we receive from our medical advisors and the prayers and encouragement we receive from all of you as we protect our health and care for our brothers and work to stay connected with you. I'm amazed at how far we've come this past year, and I can't wait to see what lies ahead. Friends, it is now up to me to conclude by simply saying thank you. Thank you for the gift of your friendship and support over these last 12 months. Your prayers and support for all the brothers have been essential as we have navigated life during these complex and challenging times. I also want to express my own gratitude to you for holding me personally in your prayers. I know that you pray for me because many of you tell me you do so. That means more to me than you will ever know. These are challenging days for anyone in leadership, and your prayers for me sustain and encourage me. Please also remember to pray for the gift of vocations for us. I believe that the monastic life is essential to the renewal of the Church and we depend on your prayers and support, not only day by day, but for our future, as we move with confidence into all those places where the risen Lord has promised to meet us. Thank you for the gift of your prayers. Please know that we also hold you in our prayers. Though we are often physically separated, at the same time, we are united through our prayer for one another in the very heart of God. There, in the heart of God, we can embrace, encourage, uphold, and enfold one another in love, joy, and peace. My prayer for you, as it is for my brothers, indeed for the whole world in these coming months, is that we may be one in heart, one in the heart of God, where all are embraced, encouraged, upheld, and enfolded by the love of God. Wherever you are, and whatever you face in the days ahead, may you know that to be true. So thank you. Thank you for the gift of your friendship. Thank you for the gift of your prayers. 
Please know that we pray for you.